Yeah? Do you want to come up here? Are you going to help? No? Well, come on. I know, you can only get up from that side. Come on. There's a boy. So friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we are cautiously optimistic about the new year. I had a wonderful holiday season and enjoyed some time off from my day job to relax and unwind. But um, because of that, I'm finding re-entry a bit difficult. My routine is out the window and I find myself procrastinating and being avoidant of the things that I should be working on. One of the things I want to work on this year is being a little more gentle with myself. I'm not always going to have the energy and motivation to get everything done the way that I want to, but shaming myself for it is counterproductive and will inevitably lead to burnout. So this week, I'm gonna be working on a small project just to get back into the swing of sewing and filming and editing gently. I've been wanting to make some things in addition to clothing that will improve my SEA camping experience. I've been thinking about ways to transport and store goods and clothing that are a little closer to authentic. And I came across these wonderful sort of cloth market bags dating back to the 14th century. They're made from one length of fabric folded and sewn in such a way that there are two pockets at either end of an enclosed rectangle with an opening in the middle. And the more I looked at manuscripts and paintings and drawings, I found that they continued through the 15th century, the 16th, 17th, and even up into the 19th century. I love the idea of a versatile piece that will carry up through all of the time periods I'm likely to reenact. It is finally cold here in Texas, probably for like a week at most, but I made a whole pot of tea and today I'm gonna drink it all. I brewed up some tabletop tea second breakfast because I am actually filming this on J.R.R. Tolkien's birthday and it seemed fitting. So everyone go grab your winter cuppa and as always, tell me what you're drinking in the comments and let's get into it. To the professor. I'm actually early on that one. It's not nine o'clock yet. Oh well. I am starting out today with one yard of heavy linen. Not quite canvas, but heavier than what I would normally use to make my clothes out of. I am drawing threads to make sure that I cut each of the raw ends squarely on grain. First thing I have to do is figure out exactly how I want to fold the fabric. Mark it while it's fall along two general lines. Either they're a long rectangle with the ends folded into the middle, or they're a wider rectangle with the sides folded into the middle. My yard of fabric was already a wider rectangle, so I just decided to go with that model. I am planning to hand sew this market wallet, so I'll need some thread. I have some linen thread from Burnley and Trowbridge and a few different weights that I'll be using for this project. I'm going to hem all of the raw edges first using the lighter weight 83 natural linen thread. I think this will be easier than finishing the seams afterward. I have this weighted cushion that I use when I'm sewing a running stitch. I just pin one end to the cushion and go to town. Thank you. 
I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the people who joined my Kofi membership tiers, especially Sly, Jack, Leisha, Kaylin, Mabus, Star Dancer, and Katie. Your material support makes it easier to continue making quality videos for all my croissants. Diachkenvauer Jan, thank you all so much. Please stick around after this brief commercial break. Now that all the hemming is done, I'm going to take a heavier linen thread and whip stitch the edges of the fabric closed. I'll mark the middle of the end seams to make sure that the long seam is centered. I have two different heavier threads to pick from, a slightly lighter 33 on the left and a heavier 18-3 on the right. I'm going to go with the 83. It'll still be sturdy, but manageable to sew with. I'll start on the long seam, which will be sewn up most of the way, leaving about a quarter of the seam open in the middle to be able to access the pockets at either end. Once that is finished, I'll sew the ends closed with that seam in the middle. This will allow me to carry the market wallet on my shoulder with the opening fully protected against pickpockets. Time to test out the carrying capacity. I've laid out all of the clothing that I would normally take for an event weekend at my partner's. First up, I'm packing my event garb. A smock, my black coat hardy, A London hood, of course. My St. Birgitta cap and veil. Hosen and apron. And my garters. For modern clothes, I have my pajamas and banyan. A shirt and skirt, another blouse and skirt,
a dress, and a sweater. It all fits. A little snug, but manageable. I could pack a long weekend's worth of only medieval clothing easily. And how does it compare to modern luggage? I have this vintage 1950s suitcase here that is basically the size of a carry-on. As you can see, my weekend's worth of clothing fits perfectly, if snugly, into the suitcase. I will say that the market bag has the advantage though, since I can sling it over my shoulder and still have that hand free to carry something else. The first project of 2022 is officially in the books. This was a really great sewing project to start the year off with. If you are struggling with sewing or with project re-entry, or if you just need an easy hand sewing project to keep you occupied during the welcome back to 2022 work meetings, I highly recommend making a market wallet. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you like sporadic notifications, go ahead and click the notification bell. If you're interested in finding me on other social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and all of those links will be in the description box. I will also post the link to my Ko-fi where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join my membership tiers for additional content. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Will. I guess that's a wrap.